Welcome to all of my fellow creatives. Today I will be giving you a tutorial on how to do self-portraits at home using the Polaroid Lab printer. Pre-pandemic, my favorite genre to shoot was fashion and portrait. And even though I really miss working with others, it's important to continue to be creative and always work with what you have access to. The reason I have included a makeup tutorial is because makeup is so transformational and can really take your portraits to the next level. I will list all of the makeup items in the description box down below. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. Now let's get into the makeup tutorial. These are some of my favorite items, but feel free to use the brand that works best for you. Primer. I've applied moisturizer and the YSL Blur Primer off camera, but you always want to moisturize the skin, and unless your model has perfect skin, use a primer, which should smooth out any imperfections. Foundation. I have used the Smashbox Skin Studio 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. Try to match the foundation to your model skin as best as possible. I like to keep a few different colors on hand to mix them to get the right color. Make sure you blend everything in and remember to also cover the ears and the neck area. You can use a makeup brush or a makeup sponge. I love using the Beauty Blender because it blends everything seamlessly. Concealer. I have used the Kylie's Cosmetics skin concealer in the color oak. The trick to concealer is to make sure it is one to two shades lighter than your foundation. I use this lighter shade of concealer to highlight and or brighten under the eye, the center of the forehead, the bridge of the nose, and the chin. Contour. The cream contour that I am using today is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. The cream contour shade should be at least two or more shades darker than your model's skin color. The darker you go with the contour shade, the more extreme the contour will be. So if you only go one to two shades darker with the contour shade than your model's skin, it will be very natural looking. If you go three to four shades darker, that will make the contour more extreme and the features will appear more chiseled. The areas that I contoured the most are the cheekbones, the forehead, the nose and the jawline. The cheeks are contoured to make the face appear more slender. The jawline also to make the jawline look more slender and more chiseled. The nose is contoured to make the nose bridge appear more slender and thin, if that is the look you're going for. And lastly, the forehead. If you contour the forehead, it's gonna make the forehead appear smaller. I don't really need to contour my forehead, but I like to at least warm up that area with bronzer. What you choose to contour on your model will depend on the look that you are going for. The Translucent Setting Powder by Laura Mercier is one of the most important makeup products for photo shoots. Not only does it brighten the areas that we highlighted with concealer, but it also sets the makeup in place, making it so that it does not rub off. It's a great product to have in your photography bag because even if your model doesn't wear any makeup, it's great for oily skin and eliminates any shine on the face. Bronzer. Today I will be using the Fenty Bronzer in Private Island. Bronzer is different from contour in that bronzer's sole purpose is to give the face a healthy glow. Contour shades are typically cool to create the illusion of a shadow, whereas bronzers are typically warm. I like to use the bronzer over my cream contours to set them in place and to further deepen the contour. Eyebrows. Different styling techniques for brows fall in and out of style. At this time, I would recommend getting any soap bar brand. And what I like to do is apply the soap bar to my brows with the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. Mascara. Today we will be using the mascara to melt the lashes into the false lashes. Simply add a coat or two to prep them for the false lashes. Liquid eyeliner. We have the Kai liner in black. If you can get them symmetrical, it's always great to add a wing liner to elongate the eye. False lashes. Some of my favorite very inexpensive lashes are the Kala 3D Fox Mink. False lashes, even when they are natural, are essential to elevating the makeup look in your shoots. They open up the eye and just take the shoot to the next level. The most difficult step in the makeup process is eyeshadow. 
Therefore, I have left that product out because it does take a lot more practice, time, and skill to get a good eyeshadow look down. Lipstick. So we have the Velvet Liquid Lipstick in the color Jordy, also by Kylie's Cosmetics. Liquid lipsticks are best because you don't have to touch them up as much as other lip products. And if you're using a matte, you really don't have to touch it up at all. It will stay for hours. The reason I chose this color, it's like a fuchsia plum. It's a really beautiful color blush. We have the Kylie blush in the color rosy. Ladies and gents, let's pack on that blush because it tends to get washed out with lighting and or flash. Adding more blush to your look might look a little overdone in person, but it looks really great on camera. Please keep in mind that this is more of an intense glam look and I will be using many products and steps to achieve the look I'm going for. Use as much or as little makeup as you want to achieve your desired look. Setting spray. Lastly, set your look with the infamous MAC Prep and Prime Fix Spray in the scent Rose. Also keep in mind that if you do choose to do your own makeup, it's going to be a long and taxing day. After working hard on the makeup look for a couple of hours, you then have to photograph the shoot as well. But if I have to choose between doing the makeup myself to have the exact look that I want versus not having the look that I want, then I will go ahead and do the makeup myself and just accept the fact that it's going to be a long day. All right guys, and it's time for the fun part. Let's get into the photo shoot. You will only need four things for this shoot. A tripod, a light source, whether that be an LED light, a ring light, or even the sun. You will also need a Bluetooth shutter remote control. A lot of times these come with tripods or ring lights. I already had two on hand, so I did not need to purchase another one. And of course you will need a camera. I'm just using my iPhone in portrait mode so that we can later print them on the Polaroid lab printer. And it's printing time. So shimmy on over to the Polaroid lab printer. You select the photo that you want. Be sure to line up the dots perfectly onto the lab printer. And you see how it's flashing there on the screen? That means it's lined up and ready to print. Hit print. And as it comes out, be sure to cover it because you don't want to expose it to light. What I do is I cover it with something black and then I just throw it in the drawer and I don't open it for about five to 10 minutes. All right guys, so here are the final results. I really like the effect that the Polaroid printer gives or that the Polaroid camera in general gives. It gives this very washed out, ethereal look. It's very desaturated. I will say that in the settings, because they're so blown out, I do bump up the saturation and I do bump up the contrast on my phone before I print on the Polaroid printer. So I wanted to let you guys know that. And then also just keep in mind that if you do choose to do your own makeup for the shoot, it's going to be a long day. But if you have yet to build those connections of makeup artists and other people to work with, or you prefer to work in a smaller team, then I hope this video was helpful to you. Please share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.